We call ourselves the lucky country, but our health system is in crisis. The horror stories keep happening and nobody's fixing it. This just should not happen, not in Australia. I thought I was going to die. It's soul-destroying to watch people have a bad outcome or a fatal outcome and know that it's because of system issues uh, and not because of the care that we could have given them. Dr Sarah Whitelaw sees our hospital trauma daily. She's an emergency physician in a major Melbourne hospital with this warning to our states and the federal government. It's time and we're out of time. Time once and for all, she says, to fix our national health system. Are you saying this is a, a, an election issue? It is absolutely an election issue. I believe that the community know how bad this is. Anyone who's been to an emergency department, been in hospital or trying to access hospital care in some other way, knows that we can provide world-class care in Australia, but the problem is in accessing it. After a man died waiting to be treated at Bairnsdale Hospital. Monday, this is where a 72-year-old man spent the last moments of his life waiting to be treated. A 58-year-old man suffers chest pains. An ambulance is called, but there was none After to send. several minutes on the line, the operator couldn't tell the couple when an ambulance would arrive. This is not a problem in one state or one city or one hospital. This is not a COVID problem. We see this happening in every single state of Australia. So this is Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth. It's absolutely national and it's a product of what's been happening in our system uh, and, and, our, and in our communities over the last 20 or 30 years. There was blood everywhere on the stairs. He crawled to the lounge and could not move anymore. So I phoned straight away the ambulance. Gurlinda Dobson says the three hour wait for an ambulance for her 79 year old husband John felt like a lifetime. He'd had a terrible fall. And then I waited and waited and phoned about four or five times. And it was in the end, uh, our neighbor phoned again. And three hours later, the ambulance came. The couple lived just 10 minutes from a Gold Coast hospital. I could have taken him, but you know, I, I couldn't move him. And they couldn't give me a time. They just said, I understand you're frustrated. And I said, I'm not frustrated. I am just so scared. She was vomiting. She wasn't well at all. She couldn't stand up. Um, things were getting pretty drastic. In March, Melbourne father Darren Painting called for an ambulance after his wife Janice, who was battling COVID, collapsed. Got a phone call back from the ambulance service and the, the lady um, said, uh, sorry, but you will not be getting an ambulance tonight. And uh, I just said, well, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Can you take her yourself? And um, I just said, no. I said, I'm full of COVID too. An ambulance finally arrived for Janice more than 12 hours later, but it would still be hours before she was released from the paramedics' care to be triaged. Honestly, I didn't know what was going on. I, I was just so sick. And they were sitting there waiting, and I said, I'll go and help some other patients. And they said, no, we're not allowed to do protocol. We've got to stay here and wait for you to be admitted. We're seeing terrible ambulance ramping figures. We're seeing uh, stories of people whose lives have not been saved, whose outcomes have been significantly worse. Dr Omar Korshid, President of the Australian Medical Association. He says the national health funding equation, the Fed's contributing 45% and the state's 55% is wrong. It should be even Stevens. And we're talking about 50-50 funding, so lifting the Commonwealth's contribution from 45% to 50%. That's got a price tag of around $20 billion over four years. That's pretty expensive, but it's that kind of investment uh, that our hospital system desperately needs. Now that is one big fix, $20 billion. But where is the money needed? Senior medicos say it's not just for ambulances and emergency departments, it's for a total rebuild of the national health system. We've got to fix primary care, we've got to fix our private hospital system, uh, we've got to fix community care and aged care, we've got to fix mental health, we've got to fix our public hospitals. 
the hospital beds, there's not enough of them. And that means that we just don't have the space to do elective surgery. Uh, and people who come in with emergencies get stuck in the emergency department. They can't get into the ward. I've been doing stories about this for so long. I, I was doing stories about this problem when I had dark hair, <laughs> right? So, so that's a long time. Um, but it's got worse. It has, and, and I think the fear for us is that it's going to continue to get worse unless we recognise how bad it is and do something about it. This is people's lives we're talking about. Can't bring it back. If someone dies, they're gone, and, you know, I, I think it's very sad that we've got a society that has allowed, it to, allowed us to get this far. In this election, you can hold all the babies you want, you can meet all the workers you want, and you can make all the promises you want. But which party is going to throw a $20 billion lifeline to resuscitate our health system? And what can we, the public, do to help? I think there's three good ways to help. One is if you need to come to the emergency department, if you need emergency department care, please come. Don't stay at home. Keep up with all of your normal healthcare needs and see your GP to get vaccinated, get your flu vax, get your COVID booster as soon as you can. And three, vote. This is a huge federal election issue. I believe that the community knows how bad this problem is and I think they want our next federal government to fix it.